Well, here we are on a road trip again. And what hitchhiking heart with the Harveys? Road trip wouldn't be complete without first starting with Tim Hortons. We're going to Kim's parents. We're going to the in-laws. <gasps> <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to be uh, possibly driving up through Manning Park. I'm going to go to take the ferry and uh, go up to Hope, B.C. And there's the ferry. We're the first ones in this lineup. We're taking the 6 a.m. ferry, which yeah. we thought at first it was 7, and then we found out it was 6 yesterday. Thank God we looked. Mm. Uh, we had reservations, and it's a one and a half hour long ferry ride. And although we've been given some direction that there might be some was a construction on the highway no matter which highway we go on or there's forest fires still burning right now so it may take a little longer to get to my parents than normal normally I would take a 6 30 ferry over and be at my mom and dad's for like 1 30 in the afternoon so yeah it might be a little bit longer of a day yeah. so on that note of being at uh, Kim's parents place by 1 1 30 in the afternoon do you know what time it is you know what time we got up mm -hmm. oh 4 30 Ew. Oh, for oh my god, it's early. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Even I wasn't awake yet. <laughs> That's like saying something. We're going to be going on a wine tasting tour, mm. kind of our own little tour with my parents. So we're going to bring you guys with us. But the weather is supposed to be great. This is uh, the Canadian Thanksgiving long weekend. And we'll just, you know, see what happens if there's anything else. And yeah, well, you guys will take you along with us. So yeah. with that being said, come hit your ride. Yeah. up 
So I don't think we're going to be filming too, too much more today because when I get home to my family, I just want to spend time with them and they're not much for going in front of a camera. So um, tomorrow is going to be a big wine tasting day and we are being treated to a lovely lunch at Lake Breeze, which is a winery that does amazing food. So of course we will be taking you with us. I hope these little bits of clips showing you how smoky it is, just know that it's not I have like, it's not that I haven't cleaned my lens on my cap or anything, my oh, lens yeah. at all, but uh, it's just really smoky. But it's, really, what it makes for, for some amazing photography. Oh yeah, it yeah. looks eerie, like October as if it was fog. Yeah, like you ever seen the movie The Mist? That kind of misty, that, but it smoke. Yeah. Just, wow. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty intense. All right, so for now, everybody, bye-bye. wine tasting morning off with a wonderful breakfast, snack, and coffee at the Bench Market in Penticton. This is a location I like to hit up every time I do go to visit my parents because it's so unique. It's all supporting local artisans as well as farms in the local area. Our first stop was at Poplar Grove Winery just inside of Naramata, British Columbia. Founded in 1993, Poplar Grove Winery is one of the original five wineries on the Naramata bench. With stunning views of Okanagan Lake, this is a great place to come, relax, have a meal, because they do have catering as well as a restaurant, but they also do amazing wine tastings here. They even have a little private tasting room as you see right here. Poplar Grove Winery is recognized for crafting their outstanding signature red blend, The Legacy, as well as delicious Cabernet Franc, Merlot-focused wines, and an exceptional Pinot Gris. Stop number two becomes La Franz. Jeff and Niva Martin purchased the current site of La Franz back in 1999, which actually used to be an apple orchard growing grape varietals such as Malbec, Cabernet Sauvignon, Petit Verdot, Chardonnay, Riesling, and Pinot Noir, just to name a couple. Stop number three had us visiting Ruby Blues Winery, also in Naramata. In 2008, the funkiest boutique winery was opened. Ruby Blues quickly became popular with visitors to the Naramata bench. The vibe is fun with fine wine and great rock and roll music. Such a great vibe here, guys. Highly recommend coming here. It's awesome. The people were great and non-pretentious. Named for the winds that blow across the bluffs year-round, Lake Breeze started growing grapes in 1985, producing dozens of award-winning wines. Something to take note here though is this was the only winery we needed to have a reservation to do a wine tasting. The Patio Lake Breeze restaurant is absolutely stunning. This is a seasonal restaurant only opening between the months of May and October. We all enjoyed such an amazing meal with of course a wine pairing. Highly recommend you guys come and check out this restaurant if you're in the Naramata area. On to a slightly different stomping area. This is Tickleberries. This is the best place to get ice cream in the South Okanagan. Well, on summer holiday, a couple from Whitehorse in 1988 fell in love with the area and in 1990 they opened Tickleberries. Making their own chocolates, fudge, kettle corn, and serving more than 50 flavors of ice cream. Tickleberries is the most important place to come to for that summertime treat. On our way back to Vancouver Island after an amazing weekend with family, wine, food, you know how it goes, we had to stop in Karameas because on our way up to the Okanagan Valley, we saw a lot of these beautiful pumpkin stands that just were just screaming like stop and take pictures and respect how much time all of this took many people to do. These are small farms in the South Okanagan and 
Wow, stunning, great pictures, great place to pick up your uh, pumpkin for Halloween as well. On our next episode, Nelson and Monty and I take you right back to Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, where we take you to one of the most amazing Canadian iconic pieces, and that is the Blue Nose 2. We take you back to mid-July of this year where we walked on the deck and imagined what it must have been like in the days when fishing schooners were alive with activity. So come hitch a ride with us on Blue Nose 2.